Hey everyone, it's Allison, and I wanted to come to you today to show you how to make our nacho cheese dip. This is a special request from my friend Dietrich. Hey Dee. Um, this is our nacho cheese dip. It comes in one of our fabulous little hexagon jars. And um, Dietrich said she made it for her family and it didn't quite turn out. So I'm going to show you how I make it. And also um, a few little extras, because it is Super Bowl Sunday today. And while nobody in my house is particularly interested in watching the football game, um, I have three daughters, so um, and none of them are all that interested in football. Um, and my husband, who is the only one who would probably watch the game, is actually out right now coaching my youngest daughter's basketball. Um, tonight we are gonna have a little bit of a sort of Super Bowl feast. I've got some uh, buffalo chicken bites um, and some I'll make some buffalo cauliflower bites for my vegetarian daughter um, and nacho cheese dip would be kind of perfect I'm also gonna throw uh, some tater tots in the oven you could make some nachos for this um, but I decided to have some tater tots instead so let me uh, turn the camera around and I will show you how easy it is to make our nacho cheese dip all right, so like with all of our jars, the recipes are right there on the sides. Um, and I just wanted to point out our ingredient list. This, you can basically uh, pronounce everything that's in this, and it's not full of a whole lot of um, additives and preservatives. And I'm going to insert a picture right here of your average sort of old El Paso or, or um, grocery store brand um, nacho cheese dip and show you the difference between the two. Anyway, so this is our nacho cheese dip and all of our products have the recipes right here on the side. So we need three tablespoons of the dip mix and we need half a cup each of sour cream, cream cheese, and grated cheddar cheese. Now, um, I am actually using all lactose-free products today. Um, I can't do um, lactose, but I can tolerate dairy. Um, and so I'm gonna make this lactose-free. However, just so you know, this has some milk in it, so it's not gonna be completely lactose-free, dairy-free, that kind of thing. Um, so if you are vegan, you, I'm sorry, but this has milk in it and um, that really won't work for you. Um, but because I want to indulge in this a little bit, I'm going to make it for me. So I've already got my half cup grated cheese measured. Now, um, I don't know if you know this, this is one of our little prep bowls. And right here on the sides are the measurements. So that's the metric. You turn it over. So you've got quarter cup half a cup, three quarters a cup, and then if your prep bowl is all the way full, that is one cup. So I've just measured in half a cup of grated cheese, and yes, that is lactose-free cheese. It was kind of a brilliant moment when I found all these lactose-free products in my grocery store, especially the cream cheese, because I can indulge in a lot of these dips without worrying about taking the lactate or whatever. measure half a cup of this cream cheese. Now this is a spreadable spreadable cream cheese. You could use brick as well, but the spreadable is going to be easier to mix. If you use brick, I would just leave it out on your counter to soften for a little bit first. And then you can easily see that, that is half a cup. So I'm put that in my mixing bowl. We'll do the same for the cream, for the sour cream. So basically up to where this um, little bump out, that's half a cup. Now I can add my 
nacho cheese seasoning. So I'm gonna use our four in one spice spoon. These are designed to fit inside all of our jars because um, your average tablespoon measure, uh, measuring spoon won't fit into our jars. And this large size here is a tablespoon. I'm looking at my jar, I'm hoping I have three tablespoons left. <laughs> one. Not quite three, but we'll go with it. It's another jar killed. And then just give it a good mix. And you can put it in any heat safe dish. Um, today I'm actually gonna put it into my rectangular steamer and do this in the microwave. Just to show you how simple it is. product in Canada. This is our little mini spatula and it is perfect for jobs like this where you got like a little small bowl. Also really good for icing um, cupcakes. I'm just going to spread this around. Scrape off my spoon, get all that goodness into my steamer. The instructions say to put it in. Um, a heat safe dish and then heat until bubbling. It doesn't give you um, more specific instructions than that. Um, I'm gonna put it in the microwave for say two minutes and we'll take a look at it. While that is going, I'm gonna share my buffalo with you. So this is our buffalo wings seasoning packet. Again, instructions are all on the back. Um, it shows you how to make the sauce and also wings. Now, um, I'm not a big wing fan, uh, but I wanted to try the, the seasoning on chicken itself. So I've actually cut up just some chicken breasts into cubes and they have been marinating overnight actually in the seasoning. Um, Today is Sunday, which in my house is soccer Sunday. Um, and we also had the added complication of a volleyball tournament this morning. So I knew I wasn't gonna be home to do all this. So I prepped most of this last night. So um, before I put these in the oven, I'm gonna toss them in the sauce that I've pre-made. But first I'm gonna toss my cauliflower bites. Now these I also made yesterday and I basically, um, dipped, I just chopped some cauliflower into bite-sized pieces, dipped them in a um, flour, milk, and like salt and pepper mixture, and then, and some panko, and then coated them in some panko, and baked them at 350 um, until they were crisp, and then I'm gonna cover them in the sauce. So, buffalo sauce. This is our, the lid for our prep bowl, and there's our buffalo sauce. And I'm just gonna give these guys a good toss. And the reason I'm doing the cauliflower first is that any leftover sauce, and I have another container of sauce, but any leftover sauce, I can easily add the chicken pieces to and I'm not contaminating anything. Because not only are we worried about cross-contamination for say food safe, but also for my vegetarian daughter who doesn't want anything that has touched meat to touch her vegetables. So I'm just gonna 
give this a good coating. And like I said, I do have some more. This is not enough. And then I think I might actually toss it. Let's see if I can not get it all over the counter as I do sometimes when I do this method. Spice and the vinegar on that. So confession time, I'm not actually a aficionado of ranch of, ranch, of buffalo seasoning. Um, probably because it's typically put on wings and I don't like wings. I've never really had it before. <laughs> Alright, this is one of our quarter sheet pans. I just got some um, parchment paper. And I'm going to turn these right onto it. Try not to get my pan dirty. And these are going to go into a 350, well actually they're going to go into a 400 degree oven because I'm cooking various things at the same time and I'm trying to, you know, do that thing where you pick a temperature in the middle of where everything else needs to be. That's what I'm doing. So they're going to go into a 400 degree oven. Not for very long, just to kind of crisp up a little bit. Okay, so that's the buffalo cauliflower, and next we'll do the chicken. So, reading the instructions for the wings. You're supposed to toss the chicken wings in the remaining seasoning. So it tells you how to make up the sauce, and then it says to toss, um, it says two pounds of wings, I don't have two pounds of chicken, um, in the remaining seasoning, place on a bake sheet, bake for 25 minutes, and then you toss it in this and serve it. So this is ready to go for my chicken. I'm gonna put this on my sheet pan and then I can cook it. And I've got some pre-prepared chicken strips on there because I know my youngest daughters will not eat this. And rather than have a fight, I'm just gonna have some chicken wings all ready. I will encourage them to try these. Some of them are sort of heavily seasoned and some are lightly seasoned. So maybe I'll pick ones that are lightly seasoned and get them to try it, see what they think. And then obviously if they like it, they can keep eating it. If they don't, there is chicken strips ready for them. I try not to cook multiple meals. I mean, obviously with a vegetarian daughter, I have to cook a couple of versions of whatever I'm making. But, um, try not to cook multiple meals and just make, that sounds bad, encourage my children to eat whatever it is that we are, are eating. But sometimes I will make adaptations. Okay. So that's ready to go in the oven. Okay, so this has had two minutes in the microwave. And I'm gonna give it a bit of a stir. Now this is not your traditional queso, right? But this is not bright orange, because everything in here is real. There's nothing artificial, no artificial colors or flavors. The only orange, well, the, the, the dip mix has um, cheddar cheese in it, so it's orange. What has it got in there? It's got Parmesan cheese. Uh, it's got red bell peppers, chilies, and chili powder, um, which will make it orange. And then my cheddar cheese was orange as well. But it's not that neon nacho cheese dip stuff that you get at the um, ice rink or, um, stadium. That looks pretty good to me. It's not separated. Sometimes when I use the lactose-free products, it will separate a little bit. And if you make this with yogurt instead of sour cream, it might separate or there might be like oil that comes to the surface. But this looks pretty good. What do you think, Deidre? Is this what yours looked like or was yours somehow not like this? So let's get something to test this with. 
These are from Costco. Um, if you are gluten-free, these guys are your answer. Yep, that's good. Not a ton of heat to it. A little bit of a kick. And I'm sure it's got that, that slow build. Yep, there it is. It's hitting the back of my throat now. If you wanted to add more heat to this, I would add some Poco Picante. And I'll grab that for you. So this is our Poco Picante um, spice mix. So you would make use this to make uh, salsa, fresh salsa. Um, so you could either make fresh salsa and add it to it, so it's more of a chunkier nacho cheese dip, or just sprinkle some of this in there. This is quite spicy, so it will make your nacho cheese dip quite spicy. But I am enjoying this, and I'm enjoying the fact that I can eat it without um, taking a ton of lactate. All right, guys, so I will come back once my um, buffalo chicken is finished and just show you everything. Um, but until then, have a great night. Bye. All right, my buffalo chicken is finished. Doesn't it look delicious? Now we're gonna um, put it in the sauce. Let me just move this over. My husband just got home and so the game is now on. It's officially Super Bowl food. All right. Um, if you're wondering what this thing is underneath my pan, this is the roll-up rack. Currently only available in Canada, um, but uh, if you are Canadian and you're watching this and you are short of counter space or you just need that little bit of extra um, device <laughs> to help you, um, you know, plate hot stuff, I highly recommend the roll-up rack and I will show you why in just a minute. Okay, so I put all my chicken into the ranch sauce there, or not the ranch sauce, the buffalo sauce. So this is going on my counter and I can put any hot things on there. You can put this on your dinner table um, to serve hot food. And then when you're putting it away in the cupboard, look at this, it rolls up and stores just like that. It is brilliant. Also really great over a sink as a drying rack. Wash your vegetables, wash your dishes, whatever you need it to. It's brilliant. All right, we got them all in the sauce. Let's give them a good bath. Whew, getting vinegar up my nose. Okay, we are ready. So other things that I have prepared. I've just chopped up some vegetables and yes, I know that um, celery is probably traditionally served with um, buffalo wings, but um, I used up my celery just the other day making a, a soup. So we got carrots and cucumber and ranch dip. This is also our Epicure. Um, an Epicure product. We have a great ranch dip that my children actually insist on eating now, which I'm quite happy about. Um, I also had some leftover coleslaw in the fridge and some leftover coleslaw dressing, so I just tossed that together, trying to get as many veggies as possible. And then, of course, my nacho cheese dip, which I'm actually going to pop back in the microwave um, and just give it a bit of a warm up before we sit down and eat. All right, so happy Super Bowl, everyone. Bye. Okay, so before I go, I thought I would share a plate of food. Um, this is basically going to be my dinner. Well, I didn't add the coleslaw, but I'll add that after. So I've got some buffalo chicken bites, some buffalo cauliflower bites, some tater tots, just as a fun little element, my nacho cheese dip that we made, carrot sticks. Um, I can use the ranch dressing. This was actually made by my husband. Um, with our, or my lactose-free sour cream, so I can indulge in that. And then of course I've got my coleslaw. All right guys, enjoy the Super Bowl, bye.